cool, isn't it? Again, this is courtesy of Hype Beast. Just on first inline sneaker, the courtside hides inspired by Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, sorry, Ferrari Testarossa five one two TR. Um, obviously, you're familiar with Just on. He was obviously one of Kanye's right hand men during the early sort of like period of the Jordan era retro era time when they were all hanging out. Him, Virgil, um, what's his fucking name again? The hairdresser guy. A lot of them, anyway, right? The original crew they hang out with them, Kanye. And again, Kanye's influence is strong in the, in the ability to kind of cultivate a group of people around him, like minded, who then go on to do their own thing. And they're all killing it individually, of course. Um, and Just Don obviously has his own sort of like snapback collection that he obviously made popular with the whole like leather python straps and um, what do you call it? Is it beak visor? The front of the bit of the hat where regardless you know what i mean right he kind of started off that trend and now there's many a brands have kind of come in and copied him um i actually owned one of those hats i sold one don't know which one i had i forgot which team it was that really matter but hey um he does really good with all that sort of basketball inspired stuff again it's a, it's very much basketball inspired um you know luxury items and unless you kind of like that look it can be somewhat you know marmite but um these shoes i gotta be honest critic him again maybe it's not for me to wear day to day and it might not specifically go with a lot of stuff in my wardrobe but just in terms of design they look fantastic like legitimately fantastic like everything that you would hope to see from a designer shoe right because that's what it is it's kind of like a luxury designer shoe you see it next to a hermes birkin bag there it looks so great it's taking all the elements of some of you know um the more legendary shoes within nike sort of archives and sort of kind of giving it an updated fashion tint you know this exaggerated thicker sole here you've got this great toe box you've got this really great low prof kind of flat profile again none of that annoying um banana foot thing that <coughs> nike has going on with a lot of their retros look at the massive sort of um rubber labeling here on the on the tongue great eyelids like just it just looks solid as hell in it the laces are nice and thick they can be tied pretty they can be i guess tied one way or kind of left really loose as well and they'll still look pretty good like this white colorway is the one but that black and bread sort of colorway and i think i'm not sure if that's always translucent does look translucent but this sort of black red colorway is just come on man this is so good it don't get me wrong it does have a little bit of a fear of god vibe towards it but as just an original sneaker in terms of what it looks like like these are incredibly good like incredibly good and they actually look of real high quality they look like they've been you know when people say made in italy these look like they've been made in italy um and look how they're going to be well worth whatever retail price he puts on them in the end but these are really really good um of course i'd hide look at that shape look at the shape i go on about this a lot mostly because again if you look at some of the older nike models especially some of the vintage ones um you know just let's just take a jordan 4 one of my kind of top shoes or one of my top five shoes of all time you look at an, an actual jordan one that came out in the 90s or whatever when it did originally come out is it 90s or 87 whenever it originally come out you'll see that the profile of the shoe is a lot more aggressive and flat than the sort of retros when they initially then ended up retroing them again the back sort of like hill portion kind of sank down a bit some of the panels got a bit skewed the toe boxes had that weird banana thing they just messed up they messed it up and for some reason whenever you complained about this sort of stuff you'd always hear back that you know to replace the tooling and to get the last the original kind of mold or to remake the mold it'll just it costs like somewhere within the you know half a million dollars to get that redone whatever it is right the price is usually above 10 grand to get that sort of last done and that's the excuse they generally have in terms of why they're not going to do it but you think to yourself surely if nike decided to just make a retro of a jordan 4 a jordan 1 all right whatever the successful ones are or the most popular ones are sorry jordan 6s 7s and decide to make them to spec all right to spec like you see the ones that people are wearing now and getting them resold to spec of the ogs like a jordan 1 85 gray that everyone was flipping going you know crazy over you get those you make them to spec to how they originally came out you give them a distressing on the sole midsole whatever it may be you could easily charge people two times three times the retail price and they'd gladly buy them gladly especially because you have to think most of the shoes you're definitely marketing them to wall sneakerheads 
So why not just make what make it the way that they want it to be made instead of doing all this other hullabalooza? I never really understood why that was actually a thing. But, you know, the good thing about it nowadays is that um, these other individuals can come in and now with obviously collaborating with certain factories or maybe getting certain deals. I don't know. Or just investing money into it. It doesn't matter that they're able to go and do this sort of thing. Because I think a few years ago, this would have been a little bit more impossible. Or maybe now with the Internet. Um, if as long as you got the money and the kind of time and the knowledge and the know-how you can basically make your own shoe from the ground up and you can if you want um, give these other brands a run for their money especially in that space that niche space where you're kind of you know specifically selling to a particular customer who doesn't mind spending you know more than 200 300 pound a sneaker because they're already they're already buying luxury designer shoes from you know you know storied fashion houses why not go to an actual person like a don c who's got an actual history within the sneaker community game knows everything there is to know about trainers spend the whole time buying them himself you know had his own shop had his own brand all this sort of stuff he's definitely going to give you a far better um iteration or example or version of his own take on a classic shoe than you would get from like a you know saint laurent for instance right they're going to give you a sort of bastardized um ch shitty sort of fashion version of a shoe but he's definitely going to give you the sneaker side of it and also the more luxury fashion side of it as well like these are a perfect amalgamation of this I'm not too sure if that tongue is slightly inspired by an harachi is that me or is am i bugging out this little strip there on the front of it looks like a little bit of an harachi inspired tongue inspired there but regardless man these these flipping core side highs are absolutely gorgeous i'm a big fan of these um i think they came out on the 25th if i'm not mistaken i'm not too sure what the price is but i'm sure it's not going to be cheap but still regardless of what the price is um the shoe is sick the um colorways are definitely going to be amazing when they ended up dropping more over the next few current seasons i'm assuming it's going to be an easy seller for him it's definitely going to make this guy a multi-millionaire that's definitely for sure if he isn't already that's definitely an icy clear soul isn't it yeah that definitely looks like it but yeah big up don c um, just on uh, core side highs they look incredible I'm a big fan of them um, and yeah if you got yourself a pair count yourself lucky